We're gonna cut a nice, nice some aluminum. Nice big aluminum bracket. Angle aluminum goes yeah. this way. Half inch by six by six. Mm. Yeah, by uh, aluminum. Long. And drill some holes and through bolt it to the stringer. Just like just like these guys here. So where we're at now is we've got the front stringer brackets and isolators and the gear mounts there all set. We set all that in um, several weeks ago. Now we're dropping the motor in, kind of do a final alignment with the shaft. The shaft goes through the bottom of the gear. Maybe I'll show you a shot of one of these gears in the warehouse. But the shaft goes through the bottom of the gear. It's a close coupled V, right? Yes, correct. And so. Um, we got to get it pretty lined up so that we can measure for these rear brackets here, stringer brackets, to mount the rear, or I guess it would be the front of the engine, mm -hmm. yes. but at the rear of the boat. We've got some precision machine starboard washers that fit inside the gear, and so Frank slides them in and out and kind of feels, it's like a feeler kind of thing, and feels for how the alignment is with the prop shaft, and when they slide in and out real easily without having to kind of press, push pressure on the shaft, up or down or left or right, that's when we know we're pretty well aligned for this preliminary alignment just for the motor mounts. Just to kind of keep the engine from moving around. All right, so we made up some brackets, six by six by half inch L aluminum, um, 12 inches long. The key right now, you're gonna find center of this. Right. Find the center. You're gonna put this like this. Okay. You can clamp it on center, right? Like kind of like that. Once you clamp it, then you know if you have to bed it or just screw it on, glue it on. It looks like we might end up just bolting it on with M65. But I'm not sure until this goes on permanent. So if the angle, if the, if the uh, angle up like this, you're right. Or like that. If there's a gap, you mm -hmm. use Q cell. You're right. If it's minimal, the isolator, this rubber part would take a little bit of care of you. A little bit, a little bit, not much. But it would take quite a bit this way. Right. Okay, so that's what we try to make them square as possible to the stringer. So it's not bad, but it's loose. See that? Right. So we still need to adjust it. Get so on this side, it turns out that the isolator is going to be a little bit too far away from the stringer. So we're going to space out. We, we, we have to carry these spacers in stock that we have made. And we're going to space this motor mount out just a little bit just to get the isolator to sit a little more centered on the stringer bracket. This uh, construction here, so we had to cut cut about an inch and a quarter off of this isolator stud, just make it a little bit shorter. We could have just lowered the um, this bracket down and let the motor ride higher higher on the isolator, but we thought it seemed better for 
resisting vibration and just general stability of the motor to have a little closer down on the bottom of the, on the bottom of the stud. Okay, so we we hold it up, we held it on there, and we marked this is the str top of the stringer right here, and then we're gonna drill three holes in there, kind of in halfway point between the stringer and the bottom of the bracket. What size? What size bolts, right? Half inch. Okay, so we got the stringer brackets drilled, and one for port and one for starboard. Mark this one, forward starboard. And what we're going to do now is try to get them down in there and clamp them into place. We've got some clamps here. Get them kind of clamped into place and mocked up into place where they're going to go. And then we need to try to drill through the stringer for a through bolt. Okay, I got both the stringer brackets clamped to the stringer right up against the bottom of the isolator. So we're ready to mark for the holes, see if we can drill them. And if we have to pull the motor to drill them out, that's what we'll do. see we marked where the bracket went, the center hole. We're going to use the center hole to locate it, but as far as the angle of the bracket, this way, we're going to pivot on that center hole and make the angle match this angle so that everything's flat on one plane. So here's the setup. We got uh, two clamps on each side and a um, nice big wide piece of aluminum. And this will make sure that they're aligned. They're on one plane, both this way and this way, tilt wise. And so you can see now I can loosen this one clamp right here and adjust the tilt to match to match the tilt on these guys right here. the holes with the drill. I'm just gonna, I just dimple them because I'm gonna drill them without the bracket in the way that way I can make sure, it's easier to make sure I'm drilling straight through. Okay, so we have these backing plates we're gonna put on the back of the stringer. Um, you might think I could just drill these holes to match, but the thing is, since I I have to drill this by hand with the cordless drill. You know, those holes I hope are pretty straight, but they're never going to be perfect. So what I did here is I clamped the uh, bracket onto the back of the stringer, and I'll mark the holes with the drill. Next step is to go ahead and get everything down and we're going to put it with the M65 with glue. So when I'm setting stuff in the caulking like this, I uh, tighten it up and I let it sit for a little bit, a few minutes at least, and then I re-tighten it because sometimes the caulking sort of squishes out and 
between the surfaces. Okay, there it is, all done. So they're set in, M65, pretty flat across the bottom. There's a little, I don't know if you can see with this light, little, little tiny gap, but well within the tolerance of what the isolators can make up. Maybe a sixteenth of an inch and six inches. So we're all good to go.